Hello and welcome to episode five. Yeah. We, wow. Of the Solar Quotes podcast. All the way from the home of the Adelaide Fringe. This is probably the worst selling fringe show. <laughs> uh, mate, well, we'll work on it. We'll make it better. So, yeah, I'm very excited about the fringe this year, but I've, I am, of course, more excited about the articles I wrote this week. So, start with uh, my battery test centre article. Yeah, you wrote that about a week ago. Yeah. That that's... was a good one. Oh, thank you very much. Took long enough. <laughs> I fell down the stairs. <laughs> Still hurts. No bones broken. Oh, well, the person I landed on, they're dead, but no problems there. So, um, battery test centre. You have a nice quote of mine, I believe. I do. Shall I read it? Sure. Less than half the batteries that were bought for testing stored and supplied electrical energy as they were designed to. God damn it, batteries! You had one job! So, less than half. Yep, did. that's right. So, the uh, lithium-ion battery test centre in Canberra, they're funded by ARENA, they test batteries for the Australian public. They bought 18 different systems in total. Less than half have actually performed properly. That's, that's a worry. horrible. Uh, Mm. Which batteries did well in the testing? The best ones, the uh, Samsung battery system, that's, more, that's basically the same as a Hansol now. So it's, the Hansol has the Samsung batteries inside. I don't know so, anyone that's selling or has bought a Hansol. True. <laughs> I don't know anyone who has either, but... Uh, the cells have done well. It's done so well in the testing. Okay. But uh, Samsung cells were used in the Tesla big battery. Yes, that's right. Maybe um, that's why. Uh, yeah, they're, they're good batteries. Uh, Samsung did have some minor problems in the past, uh, but that's all water under the bridge. Minor. <laughs> well, it was a burning issue for a while, <laughs> I have to admit. But... In the factory burned down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And it, the problem solved itself. They were producing faulty batteries, the battery burns down. Well, they had a fire. I don't know if it burnt down, but yeah. Okay, so it was probably a good choice of battery cell for the Tesla big battery. Yes, definitely, I think. Um, I have uh, full of confidence for battery, for Samsung's battery cells. Which other batteries did well? Um, the Sony battery system did very well. Basically the same as the... Uh, Samsung, almost neck and neck. Um, the other battery system which did very well was the uh, BYD B-Box. You declared that the winner. But the B-Box has done very well. Um, I so you got Samsung, household name, did well. Mm. Uh, Sony, household name, did well. BYD, it's hardly a household name, isn't it? No. But who, are, who are these um, people? They're a massive battery manufacturer in China. Uh, they produce a good chance they've got batteries in products you own, whether they're laptops or uh, mobile phones. And they produce a vast number of electric cars and electric buses in China. So they've probably got more experience making batteries than anyone else on the planet. Um, uh, that... Yeah, of li for lithium batteries, yeah. Yeah, yeah quite and, possible. And they did the best. They're one of the biggest right. manufacturers. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Okay. Let's talk about some batteries... Um, so the Z-Cell, which mm -hmm. is made by Redflow, which is, uh, as you can see from the picture up there, is a mechanical device. So that's, this is a wacky battery. It, it's mm -hmm. got a big tank of, uh, what's the liquid again? Uh, bro zinc bromide. Zinc bromide. And to ch when you charge the battery, it plates some electrodes in zinc. And then when you discharge the battery, it strips the zinc off the electrodes. So it's got, it's got a pump in there. Mm -hmm. um, now, they didn't test this battery. Why not? Uh, it's had a few problems. Go on. And by few, I mean three, and they've had to replace it three times. E. Uh, yeah, twice because of leakages of the electrolyte. Right, yeah. From uh, lithium batteries. A cautionary trail? T a cautionary trail? A cautionary mm. tale for the uh, consumer about early adopting this new technology? Yes, would you say? early adoption of any batteries. <clears throat> yeah. You've got to be, watch out, be careful. Um, Unless you, unless you like taking a risk. Yeah, yeah. That's, some people see new technology, they're very excited and they want to buy it. 
as long as you're not selling your children's bread money to do that, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. So the Cambry Battery Test Centre is now on its third Z cell or Z cell. Yes. Mm, interesting. What about the, now this is the LG Chem Resu version one. Okay. Uh, performance wise, it looks like the battery cell de degradation wise, it looks like they'll look, probably go the distance. Can't be certain this Define point. go the distance. Stay within their awful warranty. <laughs> Why is it an awful warranty? They, they make the battery cells and they say, we'll warrant them for this long. That's how much confidence we have in them. Yep. Fair enough. Okay, that's fine. But the, it's horrible because in the written warranty, it says, oh, if it fails at this point, we'll give you 2% of what you paid for the battery. Thanks, LG. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, they can't get away with that under Australian consumer law. Wouldn't have they thought so. Mm, they should at least pro rata it. Mm. So if there's one year left of the battery, you get 10%, not 2%. And the moral of the story, if you're buying mm. a battery, read the warranty small print. Yeah. Because even if under Australian consumer law, it's a bit naughty, do you really want to fight them mm. through the justice system? <laughs> yes. Yes. And if they have a lot of confidence in their battery, then they'll have a good warranty. Yep. Which, although the B-Box warranty is awful too, but it did work quite well. So there are a few problems with uh, the LG Chem. Yeah, the original one had problems. It overheated. Um, there's no fan or other co active cooling. So, um, and it's in a temperature controlled room. What happened when it overheated? It stopped working. So let's hope Resu version two. Oh, yes, they've got a Be second better. one. They yep. have two. They're testing the second one. This old one, it's superseded. Second one has, they've no mention of any problems with overheating. Excellent. This is a simplified battery that most people probably haven't heard of. Uh, mm -hmm. It's pretty expensive. So what happened to this? Okay, they got the batteries, they set them up, and they suffered from a rapid deter degradation in capacity. Simplify looked at the results and said, ooh, we are going to check this. And they say it was set up now. It's, the setup is not acceptable. They replaced the battery gave them a new instructions for how to operate it. So hopefully now it will be fine and operate well and only have an expected amount of degradation. It's supposed to be a very good battery because it's uh, used by the US military. And when, when have they ever wasted money on uh, <laughs> rubbish? Come on. Mm. So let me get this right. Simplify gave the Canberra Battery Center the wrong instructions. That appears to be what happened. You see, as an engineer mm -hmm. and a control engineer, at what well, used to be, I would argue that a battery should be designed so that you can't operate it in a way that will damage it. There should be a layer of protection in the ah. battery management system that says, mm -hmm. no, you can't do that. I'm not going to discharge it that fast. But obviously, that's not the case with a lot of batteries. Yeah. Now, this thing, this is called a Ampeter Super Lithium. That's right. And the company is not around anymore? No, the Queensland company was selling them. At the time, it was, basically the, it was definitely the cheapest lithium iron battery pack I was aware of in Australia. Yeah. So the uh, battery test center had one. It ran into problems. They sent it back to be fixed to, to Ampetus Super Lithium in Queensland. Yep. And they returned it. They thought it had been fixed, but apparently developed problems again. And what I read in the report is that the man Chinese manufacturer of the battery, Thin Lion, did not honor the warranty claims. Right. The company in Queensland is no longer with us. A clear warning to anyone out there thinking of importing batteries. Um, you've got to have your agreements ironclad, and you also have to trust the manufacturer you're buying from. Um, Things can and do go wrong. So buying a home battery is not without risk. Oh no, definitely not. But what if you buy it from a company with a lot of experience in batteries, with a great brand name mm -hmm. and a great reputation like Tesla? Or, yeah, well. Well, uh, should we talk about that? Yes. So I imagine that Tesla would definitely have your back if there were any problems. It would be very important to them to keep customers and uh, make sure any early problems are taken care of. Now, the reason there's a picture of some lightning here is 
I think two days ago, we got two support tickets at almost the same time. And they both have the same problem. They've both shelled out 15, about $15,000 for a Tesla Powerwall 2. There was a lightning storm in their area. The Tesla Powerwall 2 stopped working. And both of them are struggling to get a warranty claim from Tesla. One of them is struggling to get any kind of contact from Tesla at all. And this is, this is really worrying. I'm going to do a blog post next week, hopefully, that goes through the details of at least one of these cases in detail because I don't, I don't think it's good enough. So um, this, this one chap, he has got a Tesla Powerwall 2. Um, he's got a nice big solar system. He was very, very happy with it because it's a great battery and it stopped working. Uh, after a lightning storm, but everything else in his house is working fine, including mm. the $50 Chinese router mm. that the Tesla's connected to. Everything else is absolutely fine. And Tesla are refusing to repair it under warranty. They're saying they'll repair it, but he has to pay it. They're suggesting he claims it on his home insurance. And in my mm. opinion, and I'm going to look into more details, but on the surface, I don't think they've proved beyond any reasonable doubt that the lightning caused this. Um, what do you, I mean, even if it's related to the lightning storm, the fact that the, the tester and the gateway have failed and the rest of his house, every other electrical component in his house is fine, what does that tell you? Ele electronic equipment has to be able to survive things such as lightning storms in Australia because Australia has lightning. We're not that spot off Ecuador where <laughs> lightning never strikes. He didn't have a direct hit. Mm, no, no, it wasn't like God, the finger of God destroying his Tesla system. It was something in the area, and apparently the Tesla was the only thing affected. If that's the case, the Tesla has inadequate lightning protection, inadequate surge protection. If it's a $15,000 system, they need to improve that. I mean, these two guys have got bricks now. I mean, because the other interesting thing about Tesla is uh, Giles over at Renew Economy mm -hmm. wrote a post about how he'd been invited to spend a number of days at, I think it was a three or $4 million eco mansion mm. in Byron Bay, provided oh, by Tesla, okay. powered by, I think, three Tesla power walls uh -huh. and solar, mm -hmm. with a uh, brand new Model X. Yeah, it sounds terrible. It sounds terrible. Yeah. And funnily enough, Giles <laughs> wrote a glorious review of the, of the Tesla technology. Um, mm -hmm. And that, you know, that's, um, so they're spending millions impartially. of dollars on mm. telling people how great the Tesla hardware is, yeah. but appear, to be uh, cutting corners when it comes to supporting their own customers that have shelled out for these things. So mm. anyway, well, I'll do a detailed blog post with just the facts mm -hmm. and people can decide for themselves. Yep. Um, but very, very disappointing and goes to show that even buying a battery direct from Tesla mm. doesn't mean you're not gonna have problems. Um, yep. <laughs> the other thing about Tesla is, so they tested the Powerwall one yes. the battery Canberra Battery Test Center. Mm -hmm. They haven't tested the Powerwall 2 yet, or they haven't published the results because mm -hmm. they were having some issues. issues controlling it. Tell us about the Tesla Powerwall 1 results. The Tesla Power 1, yeah, the Tesla Powerwall 1 results are bad. Right, with some caveats. With, yes, lots of caveats on that. Do you want to talk that. us through the graph? Yeah, okay, so we have a graph. We've got uh, four systems, the worst performing one in terms of Declining capacity. Well, it's the worst performing battery on that graph, which is interesting. You, well, yes. Anyone out there with a Powerwall 1, let us know how you're going. If you can measure the capacity fade, that would be really interesting. I know with a Powerwall 2, it doesn't give you any numbers for capacity, so you can't actually track it with the app, which is interesting. Um, you'd need to put extra instrumentation on there. But yeah, I mean, on this graph, it's the worst performing battery, which is interesting. Worst review and best review of the week. Ooh, all right. What have you got for uh, us? Solar Quotes has about 40,000 reviews of mm. solar installers, uh, solar panels, and solar inverters and soon batteries on its site. Um, we get about 200 and new reviews a week. So we thought we'd go through the worst review of the week and the best, one of the best reviews of the week. So mm -hmm. th this, one is, this one is really depressing. <laughs> Sorry. It's horrible. Yeah. It's not... A, it's not a solar quotes client. Um, to be totally transparent, this company was a solar quotes client many, many years ago, and I've uh, basically uh, kicked them out because we fell out over the a brand of panel they were selling. I think it was a Munsterland. <laughs> <laughs> Munsterland yes. made in China. It wasn't made not, in wasn't made in Munster. Oh wow! But with that name, you think it would be, wouldn't you? Um, 
And so the company door knocked my mother, who is 83 years old, lives alone, and is a full pensioner with early dementia. Also, despite the fact that she has a do not knock sticker clearly displayed on her front door, she already had working solar panels installed on her home, proceeded to sign her up for another set of solar panels and put her on a payment plan. Payment plans are a tool in trade for these guys that seem to prey on, bush, on vulnerable people, especially door knockers. Um, deducted from her pension, knowing that she lived alone and her usage did not warrant further panels being installed. Well, I don't know what her usage was, but that's irrelevant. The fact that she's an old lady that appears to have been put on a payment plan out of her pension is just, it's just horrible. My attempts to have any sort of resolution deal with this company have gone unanswered. I have phoned the state manager on at least four different occasions and he has always promised to look into it and get back to me. There has not been any reply to my queries, only demands for the payments from the credit provider. Mm. The credit provider is Certigy. We see a lot of problems with Certigy. Mm-hmm. We have contacted Certigy. Certigy are literally a few doors down the road. We have told them about this. Um, John, I swapped emails with them and they're getting back to us, but we won't rest until this is resolved. Again, this is not a solar quotes client, um, but when we hear about stuff like this, we, we do what we can to try and help them resolve it. Um, in my opinion, Certigy should jump in and give this lady her money back. Definitely. Um, if they don't, well, then the courts can deal with it. Yeah. Cert- Come on, Certigy, you're better than this. I yeah. mean, really. So that's depressing. Hope, Very let's, depressing. Hope, let's hope it gets resolved. Um, and then a, a really, really good review. Um, I need chewing up. <laughs> these are, mm. these are from uh, an SA company up in Gepps Cross called DQ Electrical. Um, disclosure, Solar Quotes client. I'm, it's a long review, but I just pulled out this paragraph. I'm absolutely serious when I say this is the best experience from start to finish I've had with any trades work done at my property over the years. Thank you so much for everything will recommend you to anyone needing solar or electrical. So this is about yeah, a company called DQ Electrical, um, a s- smallish solar installer based in SA. Just, just, there are good solar companies out there. This is one of, our, one of the best reviews we got this week. Mm, sounds excellent. Yeah. Nice DQ. one, DQ. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, back to the blog. Right. CEC changes to approved solar retailer program. What was this about? Oh, they're going to um, name and shame. If you uh, perform, if you're an approved retailer, which is like a, a club, the CEC has, which has standards, it's not, e- easy, it's not easy to get in there, and you also have to pay your fees. And uh, if you're naughty, you, they kick you out. It can take a long time. And sometimes they don't kick out people who, in my opinion, should be kicked out. In my opinion. Um, But they're saying that if you are kicked out, they will now put up the reasons on their website and uh, leave that up there so people can see, oh yes, this person was kicked out for this reason. So that's a a transparency thing. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah, as long as they're kicked out, you know, for a good reason, and they are kicked out, they're screwing up. I mean, there was a company a few months ago that went, that used to be really good and then got really bad and I put mm. in a couple of complaints. They never got kicked out, um, which was disappointing. I mean, they were doing some really bad customer service stuff, you know, installing systems that weren't working, not getting back to the people, leaving people in the limbo. The company has since shut down in Australia. So the, I was gonna say the problem's gone away, but it hasn't gone away because mm. we're still getting, um, we're still getting uh, cries for help from people who have used mm-hmm. this company and their systems still aren't working. And this company is now shut down. Um, so that's, that's a problem. They're no longer an approved retailer because they're not actually selling anymore, but they were right up until the point they shut down. I think as a voluntary scheme, it was great. But then they decided in South Australia that if you wanted to be part of the South Australian battery rebate, it was mandatory to be a Clean Energy Council approved retailer. So the numbers have gone from you know, less than 100. They're rocketing. I think they're up to about 250 in the last few months. And there's one that's just gone on there which uh, again used to be a solar quotes client. They ownership changed to an owner that I have a very, very, very low opinion of. And we basically kicked them out of the solar quotes network. Um, and they've just appeared as a, a 
Clean Energy Council approved retailer. I phoned them up. I was, I was, I was so shocked and said, wow, I can't believe these guys are an approved retailer. <laughs> Let me tell you some <laughs> stories about what's happened. Anything else you want well, to say about that? You've got a quote, Ronald. I have a quote from the great Adam Smith. And as a you know, well-known communist, I read a lot of Smith. So he said that uh, <laughs> people of the same trade seldom meet together or even for merriment and diversion, but the conversation ends in a conspiracy against the public or in some contrivance to raise prices. What's the relevance of that quote, Ronald? Right, he says that when butchers or bakers or whoever get together for a, for a beer and a meal, they'll try to think up of a way to get more money out of customers. It's a danger, and it's something you know I'm definitely keeping an eye out for. So in solar, if you're going to be low cost, you generally have to be high volume. Yeah. It's good that they're kicking people out when they do the wrong thing, but if it's, I've heard that it's possibly going to be, you know, three strikes and you're out. Mm-hmm. Is that fair on, so you're going to have guys that are maybe installing five systems a week? Yeah. And you're going to have some higher volume players that might be installing 50 systems a week. Right. So Should they be treated differently? Well, um, you've got to kick out people who do bad installs, but it should be go by the, based on the number of installs you do, a percentage. Well, it's not, it's not, Clean Energy Council is about the retailing. So it's about, mm. um, do you, are you giving the right documentation? Are you giving the right performance estimates? So you mm. get these breaches. Yeah. So you didn't give this guy a performance estimate with his quote, mm. or you didn't, you calculated GST wrongly on the quote, mm -hmm. or yada yada, or you lied to him in the sales process. So they're saying if you have, you know, I think it might be three breaches mm -hmm. and you get kicked out. Right. Um, well, that'd be great if everyone was selling the same volume. Yeah. There'd be a fair comparison. But, they're, but not. they're not. No. It has to be fair. So you have to look at, you know, what volume of installations they're doing. Because if you could have a horrible installer installing once a month and it'd take a long time for him to rack up enough violations to be kicked out. And the high volume guys are much more likely to hit that. Mm. He could be doing. Yeah, he could, be doing a, he could be doing better on average than all the small installers, but he'll still end up being kicked out simply because he installs so many. So is the danger mm. that the approved retailer scheme becomes a club for low, lower volume, higher margin companies? Yeah, definitely a danger there, definitely. Because mm. there are, you know, mm. some people think there's no place in the solar market for high volume, low margin people. And I think there's no place in the solar industry for high margin, low volume people that do it badly, mm. but I think there is a place, high volume, not much choice, um, low margin, as long as the installations are to code, mm -hmm. and as long as when the, consumer, when the customer has a problem, they act on it. Yep. Um, and there are a very small number of companies around that do that, and I fear that they will be pushed out of these schemes just through the sheer volume they're going to make mistakes Yeah. in the sales it's process. The, it's the nature of business. Last vodcast, we complained bitterly at how there was no competition in Tasmania for electricity retailing. You had one choice. Well, I, I didn't complain bitterly about that. I complained that the feed-in tariff was too low. So as soon as that went out, mm. uh, yep, this there's happened. now competition. Well, it's called competition. It's not competition. Words have meaning. It's important. <laughs> so basically, you can either stay with o Aurora. Aurora and get pay one set of prices, or you can join this new retailer in Tasmania and pay exactly the same set of prices, but you'll get five cent more solar feed in tariff. So if you have solar in Tasmania, I see no reason why you wouldn't change. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Yeah, I don't understand why there is a new retailer. Why not just give Raise the solar feed-in tariff in Tasmania by five cents. Uh, do they enjoy making people jump through hoops to get the extra five cents? I don't know what's going on. I wonder if there's any. Uh, I wonder if there's any small print, any yeah, any gotchas. Uh, it's on the surface. It seems if you can mm -hmm. get the same usage rate and five cent higher feed-in tariff, mm -hmm. just switch to these guys. What are they called First Energy? Oh, I can't remember now. They're called First Energy, which mm. is ironic because they're the second. <laughs> yes, <laughs> very good. Now, this is your latest, published yesterday. Oh, yes. Yep. You've got over a thousand shares, Ronald. A thousand bagger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, wow. I, 
when you, once you put a handsome guy like that in front, people just want to find out what's going on in this article. They say, oh, what, who's that distinguished looking chap? I'm going to read this article. It's a great post. Mm -hmm. But usually when you put the words Craig and Kelly into a headline, you get a <laughs> thousand shares. Oh, Craig Kelly. He never saw a lump of coal he didn't want a tongue kiss. So he says the battery, the big Tesla battery. Hope there's no lightning storms. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, um, yeah, they do happen here. Power wall and lightning, very, very frightening. <laughs> Warranty Mamma mia. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, his story is, oh, there's the Hornsdale Power Reserve, the big battery. It only supplied as much energy as the battery contained. Uh, it worked exactly as expected. Therefore, it's a massive failure. Can I give my take? Yes. Yeah, he said it was a huge failure because it produced a tiny amount of the state's required energy. Mm -hmm. well, it's true, it produced yeah. a tiny amount. So the critics, the political critics of the Tesla big battery do some really simple maths and go, oh, it stores 100 megawatt hours of energy. The demand is this many hundreds of megawatt hours or gigawatt hours. It's a, this is a tiny percentage. It's mm -hmm. a failure. Yeah. They totally fail to understand what it was designed to do, which this graph illustrates. So mm -hmm. the big battery was deployed as a power battery, not an energy battery. Now, if you don't know the difference between power and energy, pause this video, do your Googles and come back. If you look at this graph, so the orange bits and the blue bits are how much money that on the right hand side are how much money the battery earned through pumping out power which is short bursts of high power and that's to maintain the frequency of the grid essentially the red bits of the graph on the right are how much it earned from energy arbitrage which is when it sells energy over a longer period of time to take advantage of high wholesale electricity prices so it's really obvious that it's making a crap load more money from frequency support, which is pumping out power for short periods than it is from energy arbitrage. Yeah, mm. so the Tesla big battery is designed as a power battery. It supports the grid most of the time. It makes the vast majority of its money from supporting the grid by pumping out short bursts of high power. And that's exactly what it does. And it's making a really good return doing that. I saw something reported like $30 million in the last year. Mm. Yeah, I'll just qualify that a little. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. So, uh, the South Australian government it has a contract with the owner of the Hornsdale Power Reserve, Neoin. It the, pa the Hornsdale Power Reserve is divided into two parts. The ancillary services part, which is most of the power output, but a very small portion of the battery, only 10 megawatt hours of the battery. That's less than 10%. And Neoin runs the most of a storage and a much smaller amount of power okay. and they use that for the energy storage arbitrage yep. side of things and they're making money out of that so it does work well yeah so the other thing about this graph is the the yellow bit under the x-axis is what it's cost them to charge the battery mm -hmm. and the red bit above the x-axis is what they've made selling that yellow energy essentially so you can see there is a there's a there's a good margin in that mm. Um, but the, the concept that if it can't supply the whole state for hours, then it's somehow failed is just ridiculous. That's not yeah. what it was designed to do. Yeah. It's like complaining that your emergency generator you put on during a blackout didn't power the whole state. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Now, one more thing about this. You described Craig Kelly MP as looking like a koala with a shaven face. Yeah. How, how could anyone be upset with that? Someone complained in the comments. Really? But I think that was ungrounded. Mm-hmm. Because I did some research this morning. Ah. Yes, I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only one who sees it. Thank you. You shave that koala's face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they'd be br like brothers. Pull the mm. gum leaves out and put some coal in his mouth. <laughs> yep, yep. That's right. It's Craig Kelly. Exactly. Exactly. Spitting image. Should we leave it on that? Yes, we should, because... Well, 
Um, it's not much more you can say. No. About the I, week in solar. That's right. Take care. See you next week. Mm-hmm.